Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a video that's, it's a touching video. It's gonna be about elderly in prison. I watched this documentary and I had a comment on it and give you some of my stories about what my beliefs are about older people incarcerated. And I do know there's two sides to a story and I'm gonna even get into that. Before I get started, please check me out on YouTube, member programs, Patreon, check out my book, Gangster Redemption. You won't be sorry, that is really a wild ride and it tells the whole story of, uh, of me in prison and incarcerated and robberies and everything else. But this video, and I wanna thank uh, Fault Lines, and it's called uh, Dying Inside, Elderly in Prison. And it, it came out a while ago, but it, it, it touched me because once I watched it, I, I had to comment on it because I saw so many people, older people in prison incarcerated. And, and when, when you see some of this stuff, you're gonna have, most people on my channel have a heart. Uh, yes, you know, the, the, you, you, I also have a heart for victims. I want to explain that as well. I understand that, and I do. And as I often tell people, we want to make sure we rehabilitate so people don't reoffend and have more victims out there. So whether you like people or the system itself or not, or you believe in, you know, lock them up for life, throw away the key. There's costs to that. And there's, there's a human cost to that, obviously. And then there's a, a financial cost to that. And the elderly, it'll blow you away what that's about. So let's go into this video and I, I'm going to stop it along the way and tell you some tough, tough stuff about elderly in prison and the people I know in prison. And I think about this one because... I guess I would be an elderly person right now in prison, and that's pretty sad. And I saw some crazy things I'll get into here in a minute. So let's look at a little about this video. We ask, what's the true cost of America's lock them up and throw away the key approach to justice? The cost of incarceration in these places is off the charts. It's over double, sometimes three times what it costs to incarcerate a young person. And listen to this, if a person gets out of prison after 55 years old, 55, he's got a 3% chance, only three out of 100 reoffend. Don't reoffend, but three out of 100 over 55. It's 50% 50 from 18 to 29 year olds who reoffend. So obviously, I think, uh, you know, you age out of crime. I, I tell everybody that as well. And it's almost like what I teach people with, with kids. but. You're aging out of crime. And I think what we what's happened is when we incarcerate people with the hard drug laws and everything else that are out there, that have to be changed. They want to talk about prison rehabilitation. They want to talk about uh, criminal justice reform. You got to get rid of the standards of 85% of your time you got to do, no matter what. You know, you got to get rid of that and, and, and do it on a rehabilitation level and a punishment level. Don't get me wrong, you kill my loved one, there has to be uh, accountability in a strong way. I'm not one of these guys who are weak on crime either. I know that sounds crazy, but I'm smart on crime and I'm compassionate because there are people who could hurt someone, there are people who can't, and you'll see a little bit more of that right now. Many have serious mental illness. You know, I'm looking at that right there, that's that's called pill line. And obviously there's dementia, there's illnesses with the elderly that are not gonna be there with young people. But the numbers are there to show that we need to either give them compassionate releases or find a better way to handle people who are mentally ill. First of all, I don't believe our prisons should be mental wards anyway. So a lot of times they are, and that is sad to begin with. But the people behind prison who are incarcerated who are elderly and mentally ill or dementia, that there's some real telling questions that gotta be answered here. Our fastest growing segment is the inmates that are the age of 50 and over. Uh, we have about 3,700 now that's grown almost 200% uh, in the last uh, decade. Elderly people in prison are a growing problem. I don't understand why states and the federal government doesn't realize, again, Accountability has to be there, but at what cost? I just don't want to be re uh, offended. I don't want somebody to reoffend me. So, and there's people here, they can't reoffend you. They're physically impossible to reoffend you. Dementia, uh, cancer, a lot of that stuff. I don't understand why we're not getting more compassionate releases and putting them out on, uh, in the free world with their families. Uh, is it because fuck them? They they killed someone 20 years ago and it's got to go. 
They have a guy here killed someone in 1948, I think it was. And he's still in prison. I think this was in the, in the early 2000s, this video. So he's been in prison for 50 years. You think he's going to reoffend? You think the punishment was enough? Some people out there are going to say no. Murder's a murder, eye for an eye. Well, then let's just take the person, put a bullet to his fucking head, and kill him. Now, sadly, somebody out there is looking at this saying, Larry, yeah, they kill someone, they should be automatically shot. But there's so many extenuating circumstances, everybody. Just like the death penalty. There's so many extenuating circumstances, so many people that have gotten off of death row because of false testimony for totally wrong, innocent people. The Innocent Project has proven that. At what point are we going to take those chances? So we need to, to start being a little bit more logical about crime and about punishment instead of being the way the United States is. And if you are that hard, I want you to start thinking about that. My name is Plutarco Hill. Plutarco has the oldest inmate number in the state. He's 86 years old. 66 of those years have been spent behind bars. He's escaped from prison 10 times. 66 years out of his 86 years he's been incarcerated. Now, it's kind of like an interesting story. He escaped 10 times. Uh, I guess he felt he, he did enough. And, you know, he still seems to have it at 86. This guy does. But is he really a threat to society? So you're as good at getting out of prison as you are getting in? Well, whenever uh, my health was good. You know, it's really funny. He escaped 10 times. Man, the guy's good. I'd like to know that. I mean, this guy knows how to escape. And I know there's people who know how to escape. So... Uh, the reason this, this video is hitting home a little bit, guys, is because when I was incarcerated, I used to watch an old guy, and it was really sad. He was up near 70-ish. He used to come down every day for mail call. Every day. He'd be reading in his cell. They'd call mail, mail call at 4.30. He'd, you know, come on, strut on down to the, to the, to the podium where, the, you know, the, the, the station, the cop station, we call cop, look, guard station, cop station. And he'd call and they'd start, you know, Lawton, 5222404, mail, whoever it is, you know, mail, mail. And everybody's around as a whole as 100 guys waiting for mail. Believe it or not, mail. Still to this day, people wait for that hard mail. This guy came down every single day, an older guy. And he had nobody. Never got a piece of mail. It used to break my heart. It really did. I'd, I'd uh, watch him go back to his cell. I used to go talk to him. Watch him go back to his cell, he'd sit reading his book. Never once, I was in that facility for two years, never once did I see him get a piece of mail. And if that doesn't start making you think about who, who are close to you and who will forget you, who, who out there wants to care about you, you know, I do have a great, great audience. You guys, my fans, are the best in the world because you guys want to know how, and I'm going to actually do a video on how to help people who are incarcerated in some way or another because people have been asking me about that. So let's keep looking at this video. This is a tough one. What are you serving for now, this sentence? Uh, this sentence is a murder charge. How long ago? 1947. Murder charge from 1947. And this is what life means for Plutarco now. A small section of a dormitory with a few black and white photographs of his family. He's outlived all of them. He's outlived his whole family. Think about that. Think about hard how hard it is on elderly. You know, you're losing everybody around you. You know, I lost my grandmother when I was in prison, and I talk about that, and it, it breaks my heart. The prison system didn't even call me. I'll never forget it. I call home. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget. My grandmother died on March 22nd, 2003. My grandmother died. She was 99 years old. She was going to be 100 in May. Very close to my grandmother. My family calls the prison and says, can you please tell Larry he's very close with his mother. Please tell him his grandmother passed. Do you think they ever did? Never. Never fucking even came down to my cell. Nobody came to me. Nobody told me. I ended up calling home March 30th, 2003. Eight days later, I said, hey, mom, how you doing? She was good. How are you doing? This is good. I go, how's grandma? She goes, grandma, they didn't tell you. Your grandma passed. I, I remember dropping the phone and uh, going to my cell. I was crying in my bed, and uh, I actually thought about it at that point. I put myself in prison. So I don't blame the prison system for putting me there. I don't blame the prison system for giving me the sentence. I don't blame even the justice system. I was a bad guy, I was a criminal, guys. I'm not here to say I'm an innocent guy and any of that bullshit, but treat me like, treat us human, you know? Uh, it really put a really, really 
dark piece of my heart in the system because there's people who don't give a fuck. They don't care about you one iota that your grandmother passed or somebody passed. And you know how in true I know it is and it hasn't changed. When my brother got out of prison, I was out and uh, my dad died. And uh, my dad died at Alzheimer's, a very close family. And uh, I called the prison where he was at. And I said, I want you to tell my son, my brother, my dad died. They did not do it. He called me 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night, uh, not at night in the afternoon. I called there about nine in the morning and I ended up telling him. I ended up calling back that prison, cursing out the counselors, case managers, all these people who supposedly have your best interests at stake. They don't give a fuck about you in prison. And uh, I guess that's a lesson. Obviously, don't commit crimes, guys. I'm not, I'm not here again. I'm not trying to make light of, of, of being a criminal. Don't be a criminal. Don't be a criminal. But also, let's have a compassionate heart as a society. And this video here is showing me and bringing back memories of all my elderly and, and people and the people I was in prison with that I watched die. And the older a prisoner is, the bigger financial drain they pose. An elderly inmate costs around $70,000 a year to lock up. Two to three times more than younger offenders. Yeah, you know, it, 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 it blows you away of the cost of incarceration. And then this country's always complaining they don't have money, we gotta raise taxes, we gotta do this. You know, there's so much money that could be saved and so many families. Now, again, there is a victim's part of it, but I think punishment comes with a crime. Uh, I think there has to be punishment. First thing, I think you have to worry about the safety of the community, and I'm all for that. A psychopath that's gonna kill on, uh, you know, like I said, I was in prison for a long time. There are guys I was in prison with, I don't wanna see them out either, because I don't want them living next to you or me. Because they're psychopaths, they're gonna look to kill you. Things go wrong, they're gonna fucking go straight to murder. So there are those percentage of people that we do need to keep incarcerated. But that's a few, that's, that, 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 that's a very small percentage. When the government puts everybody into the same bowl, it fucks the whole system up. And that has what happened. Can you tell us what kind of impact you think your incarceration has had on your family? Well, it's been especially hard on my grandchildren because they always wondering why come I can't go home with them when they come to visit me. And, uh, and they get upset, like, why did you do it? They ask me, why did you do this, you know? That's a great point I'm gonna stop and make right here. Incarceration is hard on families. Yes, it's hard on that person, but it's hard on the family. It's hard on the family, the kids. It was hard on my kids. Everybody who knows you, because they know the good part of you. Yeah, you might have been bad. You might have had an evil streak. Something happened. And uh, it, again, it's happening all the time. But at what point does a person become rehabilitated and now everything after that is fucking bitterness. So at what time is long enough? At what is the right punishment for a crime? Yeah, I, I think it's very hard to just arbitrarily say, somebody dies, you get this. So you can't blanket it. You can't say, well, a loss of a life, a loss, of, you know, they should lose their life. Well, you know, does that mean a person who's a DUI and, and has a death or a drunk driving should get life in prison? You know, I hope not a lot of you people are saying yes, but I'm sure some are. Does that one mistake define that person for the rest of their life? I don't think so. I don't think my past as a criminal should define my life. I like my life now because I like to help people. I like to try to direct people into the right path in life. I like to show them that it's not right to do what I did or not right to do the drugs and do that and hang out with the wrong people. I try to do that. I hope I get defined as that instead of, oh, the criminal part of me. So I think everybody has to make that choice of what they really want to do. The rising number of elderly prisoners and the price tag for that trend comes as state budgets are being squeezed across the country. Oklahoma has been hit particularly hard. The second round of budget reductions uh, took a, a lot of our treatment. We have no substance abuse treatment, uh, contractually or otherwise. See, they've taken the budget out of rehabilitation, out of programs, of drug rehabilitation. Obviously, I guess they're trying to maneuver their money to the elderly, to wherever it is. You know, it's about mismanagement of, of corrections, and I think this country needs to keep looking at other countries and how they do it. If they don't, they're really missing the boat. 
And it's a very sore spot for the United States. I really believe that. It's a spot in this country that really makes me hard and get mad when we talk about human rights about other countries. And I don't think we should be throwing fucking rocks at glass houses when we live in one. Numerous prisons we visited in Oklahoma were on lockdown because they didn't have enough officers on duty to provide security. Staffing in the Oklahoma prison system is at 75%. Officials told us they were operating in warehouse mode storing people with little to no rehabilitation efforts. Did you hear that? They're, they're operating on a warehouse mode, storing people, not rehabilitating them, not trying to help them, not trying to get over their uh, issues that made them better. I really want everybody to start thinking deep and hard about the rehabilitation and, and how compassionate and how much human rights the United States has. I love this country, but it's got a lot of flaws and this is one we could fix. We could fix this with determination and good political leadership. And watching the elderly in prison is the saddest part of it all. Because you know this person couldn't hurt a fly on the outside. You'll never find somebody running for elected office uh, in the House or Senate that's going to have a platform of successful reintegration or is going to be less tough on crime than whoever they're running against. Isn't that a shame? It's all about politics. I'm tough on crime. I want your vote. You don't need to be robbed. But they don't get the bigger picture because they're manipulated. And because of that, we have an elderly population that's off the charts in our prison system. Worse than any other country in the world. What, what do you think of prison? This man is 101 years old. 100, he'll be 101 years old. Do you think he can get out and hurt somebody? I don't think so. Ms. Sparky, you ready to eat? Yeah. Here, the prison has found a low-cost solution for inmate health care. They train other prisoners as orderlies to work in the infirmary. That is done all over. Inmates become the orderlies, and you believe it or not, they're pretty good, compassionate people to the other, other inmates, usually. So I, I think that's a good way to help and get as much help as they can. They're paying this guy $5.25 or $5 a month is what they paid me. $5.25 a month is what I got. So it's not about money, that's for sure. Uh, they're doing it because they care. One inmate, Seth, takes care of his blind. A wool cap pulled down over his face to prevent light from irritating his eyes. That man is blind. I don't know who he could hurt. He's one of several prisoners here that have been granted medical parole, but remain behind bars simply because they don't have anyone to pick them up. Boy, we have to fix these problems. Man, I, the compassion, the, the want to help is driving me crazy. They hit home, man, because I know people in prison. I know what happens to people in prison who are incarcerated in bad health or, or dementia or starting a dementia. You know, when I was in prison, I was younger. I went to prison at 34 years old. I got out at 46 years old. Now, obviously, I'm an old man, so, you know, if I go in, it's, it, it's forget about it. I'll never go, obviously, uh, but that, that's what I think about now. Do you think you need to be in here? No, I don't need to be here. I need to be at home on the farm. That's where I was born and raised. That's all I know. Elderly incarcerated, some of the sad things in prison. And it's something I hope everybody can think about when they see somebody on TV. I don't believe in the sentencing of the United States and the guidelines and life without parole and these mandatory minimums and these 85%. You know, if they really want true criminal justice reform, they gotta start fixing it all. Don't just fix one part and think you did something. Fix it all. They just need a comprehensive and a people who truly care. They need people who've been in there could talk about those people who are in there. I don't mean the guard either. I don't mean the doctor, which I love. Our prisons are mental institutions and that's wrong, everybody. It really is. So I want you to think long and hard about the elderly in prison. And I, again, I want you to hopefully grow up as a compassionate person. Think of what happened to anybody you know who's older and what happened. There's so much to think about, and there is no easy answer. I'm going to say that as well. So I'm not here to say, oh, just let old people out do this. There is no easy answer, but we have to really concentrate on it. We can't do this with money, with humanity. Uh, all I can say is when you think about the United States and you think about that the United States has the worst 
prison incarceration rate in the whole world. That says something. There's something wrong with that. Don't say, oh, you know, these other countries just kill them because that's not true. It's all propaganda. We have a terrible criminal justice uh, system. You know, there, there have been many wardens and stuff who went over to Germany and went over to other prisons to learn. Why can't they implement them? Because they got politicians and they got people in the way or maybe administrations. They need to do something to fix the problems we have in the United States in incarceration, especially with the elderly. Young kids that got a full of testosterone and fucking stupid as hell and they're going to kill again, keep them in prison. You got a man like that, Mr. Sherman there, 101 years old, or 100, going to be 101. He can't hurt a soul. Put him back on his farm. If he has somewhere to go, let him go. My opinion. All right, everybody. I, I know this is a deep one, but you know how prisons and incarceration uh, get me passionate. I hope uh, uh, you think long and deep about this as well. Make sure you comment. Please make sure you pass this on. Pass it on to someone else. Have them comment. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, tell your friends about the channel. We're trying to grow it. We're going to have a movement. We are the movement. Thank you all. Much love. Much respect.